going to go ahead and call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. So moving along, we will turn to approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Cindy, do I have a second? Second. Paul, I got a second. Do we have any additions, deletions, comments, concerns, anything? Hearing none, all in favor? That is unanimous, so the agenda has been approved. <coughs> Public input and announcements. I think none. All right. I didn't have any in my email as well, and Andrea did not let me know of any, so we will <coughs> move along. Approval of minutes from September 6th, 2023. Can I get a motion? Sure. Motion from Len. Can I get a second? Get that. From Nick. Do we have any changes? <coughs> Just one. Okay. It's just the spelling of my name. Mm, yeah, we can fix that. <coughs> so Andy instead of Cindy. <laughs> so, so with the correction of the spelling of Cindy's name, can I get a uh, all in favor? It would be unanimous. The minutes have been approved. We'll move along to the Mill River Union uh, guidance update. And. Uh, Kaylin was going to come and present that and share a little bit today. Unfortunately, Kaylin went homesick. Okay. Um, it's, it's that time of year where everybody is working incredibly hard and worn out and exhausted and illnesses are going around now that we're all back together. Uh, Jody's been working very closely in guidance while we've had some gaps. So Jody's going to speak to that for us tonight. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to get closer to the mic for William. All right, so um, we, I have been up there all a bit because we had a shake up the first week of school. One of our two school counselors at Mill River left suddenly. Um, and we did have an open position that we posted last May that we never had any applicants for as well. So we were down from three to one. Um, so well, I, I, we had some applicants. The committee did yes, interview true, true. and the committee was not pleased with the yes, applicants we had. Yes, true, sorry. Um, so Brandy Benick, um, just want to speak to her flexibility is one of our three elementary school counselors and I spoke to Brandy and said is there any way you can come help us up at Mill River a little bit um, and also speak to just the flexibility of the elementary um, principals who agreed to let one of their three counselors go um, and so Brandy came up and started working three days a week up here while Kaylin and I filled in the other two days uh, and then uh, Brandy did fall in love with the work up there and hmm. applied and was selected. So now we have Cheryl Harrington and Brandy Bennett both working together. Um, and I just want to, again, like recognize that mid-year shift in flexibility and dedication. Um, so she's getting up to speed incredibly quickly up there. But Kaylin and I are still just up there supporting um, because she really had to start the, start the year running. <coughs> um, they have already held a senior meeting and advisory on September 12th to hand out Common App information, teacher letter of rec information, and the senior checklist to students and start those discussions. One of our commitments is to meet with every senior two to three times in the fall and really make sure that they have as much support as they need for their future planning. And so we've already begun that. Um, and those are, those are 15 to 30 minute initial meetings where we say, what do you wanna do next year? And what can we help you with in that planning? So that's been everything from Common App to SAT signups to um, trying to get students ride-alongs with careers um, to talking about tech schools, linemen schools, all kinds of things. So it requires a lot of um, fun planning <laughs> and organizational work. Um, so we'll meet with them two more times. Information about senior uh, meetings for parents went home uh, via school messenger on September 10th. So last year, the Life After High School series only had about 15 participants, 
and we always want to use data to figure out what we can do, use, do better. And so what they're trying this year is having two different sessions during parent-teacher conferences. So one at nighttime and one during the school day, thinking that maybe if parents are here to meet with teachers anyway, um, that might be a more a place where we can just get more parents involved. And if not, we'll just keep trying, and that just might not be a service that we need to do. I mean, a lot of that senior year, we're actually just calling or emailing parents after we meet with the, the students and saying, hey, we talked about this. Is there anything else we can help with? And um, ad drop is done for the year. Um, so our school counselors will now start going into advisories. They'll be going into junior and senior advisories to help students create resumes. And um, they go into all of the high school advisories to do credit accounting with students because our goal is that students really know what they need and they can think very carefully, even in the ninth grade. Like I met with a ninth grader in a college uh, appointment this week that he said well I know these sciences are needed for MIT so can we map out the next four years because I need to make sure I can get there right so that's the kind of knowledge we want to empower all of our students to know if I want to go to GE these are the math courses I want um, so that they have what they need and we're working always on connecting with our kids over at Stafford Tech so that they get that same level of service <coughs> Cheryl and Brandy are gonna head over there and meet with all of our Stafford seniors next week and we um, spoke to you guys a little bit last year about writing that Stronger Connections grant. So that was a state grant to cover how we can better serve students' social emotional needs. And one of those pieces is sixth grade activities to transition into seventh grade. Another piece was three years of a school-based counselor from Rut Rutland Mental Health. We were able to fill that position. So we do have a Rutland Mental Health clinician here at Mill River. Any questions about any of that? Yep. And I might have missed it, but we took Mill River High School borrowed a uh, guidance counselor from the elementary school. We did. Okay. So what happens at the elementary school? We, <laughs> yes. Great question. So right now, now we've got two and two and two open positions. So I have not um, posted the elementary one. I will do it tomorrow. I wanted to make sure Brandy had all of her contracts signed before I, you know, because I, I never want to overlap. Um, and we still have the high school one open. Um, so we will keep these two openings and hope we find somebody. At the same time, our two elementary counselors, that's Paula and Wendy, both agreed to shift their schedules. Um, so Paula is going to Tinmouth one day a week to take care of Tinmouth. And Wendy's going to Shrewsbury one day a week, and they're leaving their their village elementaries. So, I mean, the good news is that everyone's been amazing about just being flexible and making it work. The bad news is we still need two more counselors. Yeah. Um, and so we are all hustling to meet all those needs. I want to throw one thing in real quick. Saying we need two more counselors, we actually have an additional this year through that Rutland Mental Health. Yes. So really we're down one counselor from our staffing last year. Yes, we do have two open positions, but we're down one person from what we had last year. Does that make sense? That makes so sense. we yeah. still have that other person, but we wrote yeah. that grant yeah. because we needed more than yeah. what so we even it, had. Is we the Rutland Mental Health them. person here five days a week? Five days a week full time. There okay. are some limitations on what they're allowed to do. Yeah. Right, because they can't do any of this college planning, transcript planning. Right, right. Mm -hmm. They have to see kids who are signed up for RMH, but it's still a great And, sure. and oh. if you remember last year, we started off the year talking about feedback that we had gotten around the guidance department and how we, we needed to do a better job of preparing our students for life after high school. Uh, part of the shift last year was to designate one of our three folks here at the high, at the middle high as uh, specific to thinking about students in crisis, mental health, you know, more of the social emotional counseling and preserving two counselors to focus more on the academic counseling. So we, we wondered if we split those responsibilities that that might protect the academic counseling and make sure it happened better. I think we saw that it did last year and I think this year we're seeing that we're, we're even uh, making more progress you know a lot of the things Jody's discussing with you you go back five or six years those things weren't happening at this point of time in the year no mm -hmm. way um, we're definitely making growth there's yeah. definitely still great need 
Yep. So having that Rutland mental health counselor actually lines up pretty well with how we tried to divide those responsibilities last year. Um, so good. Uh, I think Kaylin actually said they had an interview with a candidate. So we may actually be bringing a candidate to fill the high school spot. Uh, that means, you know, if we if that does work out, we'd be looking for one more of that elementary person. Uh, you know somebody have them call me. Stafford something I want to mention you know another piece of feedback that we've gotten over the years and we've talked about at the board level is how are we serving our Stafford students are they really our students and we're serving the same way or do we just write them off because they're out of our building for a lot of the time a lot of the feedback was that sometimes we think of those students last so we make decisions and then then we realize the implications for them uh, I think we've worked hard to keep them in mind maybe not first but very close to first when we're making those decisions we are on a common schedule now with most high schools so Stafford reached out and talked had some conversations with principals saying hey it would be great if all the sending schools sent kids at the same time uh, and uh, we are one of one of the schools that had you know did the work we needed to do to fix our schedule so that we're sending students to Stafford at the same time that most students are getting there so they're getting the most they can out of their day here and they're getting the most they can out of their day at Stafford which hasn't always been the case for those students sometimes they were <coughs> sitting around and waiting because they they got there at the wrong time you know for when classes started things like that uh, so I'm, I'm, I hope you're also hearing that our guidance counselors are heading out there and they're serving those students too with these same uh, after high school services. They are working incredibly hard. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, and, and it's very difficult to do a planning meeting with a kid for college and then do a suicidal assessment and then go do mm -hmm. a transcript review and you know it's it's a really dynamic job here. Yeah, and we have we have people working real hard. Thank you. All right, so moving along, we are now to the hybrid elementary meeting proposal. DJ. Hey, Doug. Hey, Doug. <coughs> Sorry, William, I forgot BJ was going to talk a little too. Okay. Um, so we had there you go, Doug. Brian yep. reached out to me and said that you guys were interested in figuring out how to do the hybrid. Um, set up at the elementary schools. Um, I took a look. There are like several levels that we can look at for some of this stuff. Um, and it depends on what you're trying to get out of that. Um, very simple. I remember Len Doucette being on a phone <laughs> attending some meetings from um, South, Carolina. South Carolina. So we can get as simple as that, which I don't think was the best experience. Yeah, and I think the challenge with that is yeah. we could we could support Len or maybe one, one other person. person, but we can't support the public. Yeah. Um, the next level is we do that same type of thing where you support a board member like Liz could jump on just a Chromebook or a computer and interact. It's still not public, though. Um, so I put together a quick um, what I think we would need to do a quality job of the hybrid setup in the elementary schools. Um, first and foremost, the hardest thing to get is good audio. And with a big group, it's really hard to get good audio. You can see we, we lucked out here that we have a, almost a permanent setup of microphones. Uh, the elementary schools, we do not have the option for a permanent setup. Uh, they do make something called an OWL meeting um, speaker. And when I looked at their um, specs, they suggest two of them. What it is is basically a speaker, microphone, and camera all in one. And it'll do a lot of what Will's doing here <coughs> manually doing <laughs> um, automatically. So it'll say there's voice coming from this side of the room, it'll change the camera to that side of the room, um, and it'll be able to follow who's speaking. Automated, but it'll be able to follow who's speaking. So that combined with a, with a uh, 
device. Uh, each, I, there is some work that I need to do in each of the schools to make sure that there's at least TV in the um, auditorium and there's some upgraded Wi-Fi that's in the works already that will be happening. The other thing that is an added cost um, is that this will require setup and breakdown. Um, it's not something that Brian should be doing and it's not something I'd probably ask a school board member to be doing um, because there will be connecting with the projector that will be setting up these two mics. They will be making sure they are working. Um, there's a little bit of extra setup with that. Uh, so the proposal I put together, that if you're interested, is would require another person being here at, this, at those board meetings to, for setup and breakdown and paying them um, accordingly. Uh, I think I estimated about $80 a meeting. Uh, the OWL camera, uh, it suggested two of them. Those are not cheap. Uh, they are coming up to be around $1,000 each. So that's another $2,000 for upfront costs, a computer, um, and each of the buildings should be able to handle a projection system of some sort in the gym, whether it be a TV that they roll in or something. So I think that's kind of covered. Uh, that's what I came up with. Any questions? Just to clarify, it's one system that would move from school to school yes. to school? Yes, it would be one system that would be moved to school to school. So we would pack it up, set it up, break it down. And, and you know, if you look at these cameras here that Will's got set up, it, it's not hugely dissimilar from those in that they can rotate around. You know, they've got the camera, they've got the microphone. Uh, it's just not, as BJ said, not William moving them around, but they detect the sound and they move themselves. So we would set two of those up in the room and then our computer hooked up to a screen like here. I did ask my two techs and they weren't interested in being set up people, so we'd have to Finding find Finding somebody person. who's willing to run that, yeah. I am not a tech person, but I've been in multiple meetings with those owls in other districts, and I, it hasn't always gone smoothly. <laughs> That's my nice way of saying it. <laughs> yes, it's it's not a human being manually choosing where everything is going yeah. with a setup that can't, is can't replace William that easily. Considerably yeah. more expensive than I'm even recommending. <laughs> Oh, I, I think that sort of answers the question right there. <laughs> well, I mean, we would be doing this because we knocked it down, so we're only doing one elementary yeah. school visit each now. So this would, so this be, would be for meetings. four meetings for the entire year. I think I we mean, can make it work without the system. That, I mean, to me, that's just that's my opinion. quite a bit of money and could be a ton of hassle. I think I the know. person alone, this, the, trying to get the person to do the setup and break down mm -hmm. the equipment is equipment. We can buy equipment. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, and then there's just. Um, you know, and the what I'm hearing, and some other folks might chime in, but so far what I'm hearing is a lukewarm uh, thought of moving this direction. I do wanna, I do wanna mention that, say we. Uh, set aside $5,000 for this. If we think a couple of meetings and the cost of the equipment, uh, asking BJ, hey, do you have $5,000 left in your tech budget that's not already earmarked for something? The answer is probably no. So that's another thing to think about. You know, If the board says, wow, this is hugely important, we need to do this, we will figure <coughs> things out. Uh, but if the board is not feeling that strongly, I do want you to, to think about uh, the budgetary work too. <clears throat> maybe it's something that we put in the budget and think about for the future too. Or maybe you send BJ back to the drawing board and say, this is great, but we'd actually like something a little nicer. Matt? My thought process on this whole thing is if this was a system we were gonna use for all of our meetings, our committee mm -hmm. meetings, our board meetings, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. BJ was saying, oh, we can use them for presentations in the school and it was a, a multi-use yeah. system, that's a good point. I would say, yo, it's a great idea. Let's put it in the budget. Let's get this rolling and let's mm -hmm. go with it. But for us to sit here and say, 
let's buy this system so we can use it four times a year. Yep. But I also am looking at like, you know, we're, we're doing it for online attendance, right? Mm -hmm. We have two people mm -hmm. who are not on the board yep. attending, and sometimes that's not even and, the case. So we'd we be greatly doing, appreciate uh, yes, for Pat sure, and Wendy attending. Um, but that's it. Yeah. Seems like a big hassle no. for the we possibility mean, of not even needing it. Like I said, there are levels to this. I mean, there's no reason why you can't set up the, have the chair have a, com a computer right next to them that has this set up on there and they navigate. Um, so that would be a almost no cost option. It would yeah. just be a very low quality production. Yeah. No, good point, BJ. Yeah. Anyone else have any other questions? No, I, I, I'll just say, because I was the one that kind of pushed this, um, <clears throat> and and I agree with what board members are saying. Um, I'll just have to figure it out. We can put you on the phone. We'll it's okay. You, we'll dial you up yeah, from yeah, I know. To, to, <laughs> to have you join, and I can put you on my laptop and just spin you around like this. We and that's we just would not call that a hybrid meeting. Right. Right. That right, would yeah. be the that would be. Oh, the, and I yeah. Bj and I appreciate the work that you've done. I mean. Yeah. I, I'm well, and and uh, it never hurts to explore our options and see what we we can do, and then then we're making an informed decision. Yep. So. Bj, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Ryan, is there anything else you need me? To no, do? no, okay. you're good. Thank you. Have a go. Have a good night. So we're going to move along to board education slash strategic planning. And that is really the placeholder we put mm -hmm. for our community engagement work. Because uh, the last time we checked in, we talked about, uh, we brought our goals up, we looked at our goals, and our newsletter, I think, was the most concrete, relevant, timely one to work on. So that, that really pushed us, hey, let's, let's bring community engagement back. Let's schedule a meeting. And, and that group was working at 6 tonight to try and uh, hash out some of that work. So do, do folks want to kind of chime in? What, what was accomplished this evening so far? Share it with the full board. Uh, so we spent quite a bit of time talking about what would be in the newsletter, what a newsletter would look like, mm -hmm. uh, what uh, distribution channels we'd put it out to, uh, what that would look like, whether it would go paperless or out in the paper, whether it would be mass mailed. and. Uh, Anyone else want Our to Our timeline, we're mm -hmm. thinking about doing it quarterly instead of just doing one. Mm -hmm. When we would put those out, which I think we decided December, January, June, July, is it September, October, I think. And then there, there was talk of scheduling some follow-up meetings, which yes. you know we could do during committee reports, say, yeah. or we could do now. I, d I don't see a reason why we couldn't do it either. I can pull up. I think we decided we were going to do our next meeting on the 18th. At 6.30. At 6.30, mm, okay. uh, right before the board meeting. And we, I, I mean, I don't know what the rest of the board had in mind. We just decided or talked about as the committee, we would take this project on so it's not mm -hmm. lingering out there for other board men <coughs> members to do. <coughs> Fair enough. Would. And I think that, you know, that's good timing. Personnel goes opposite that. So 6.30. October 4th, but then the next meeting we'll do community engagement. Yeah, I think we're going to do the third yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday of each okay. month. And then you, if you've got something ready, you bring it right to the full board, right. you get approval, you're done. Yeah, yep. so there's, I like that there's not too long of a lag there mm -hmm. of having a finished product to getting it out. Yeah. <coughs> All set? Yeah. Unless somebody else has, has more discussions discussion. Or okay. 
if, you know, if no one else has any other questions or comments, uh, we will move along to wood chip contract. Okay, that was in your materials and uh, for rolling energy, we've been using uh, since we've had our wood chip boiler. Uh, the interesting thing about that is at the time when we got the wood chip boiler installed and we started trying to figure out who was going to be our vendor for the wood chips, uh, there's really nobody out there because you need to find somebody who's actually going to bring the wood chips here. So they have to be within a certain radius to actually make it worth doing. Uh, there are not a lot of local options and Froling is one of the few places that we could actually get to engage with us uh, out of Keene, New Hampshire. So that's where we originally entered into this contract and really tried to do our due diligence to figure out who's the best vendor, are we getting the best price. Uh, this is a, a renewal of our contract that we've had for several years. Uh, and you'll see the price is 165 per ton. Uh, that is up $10 from last year. So last year was 155 That's all about so, yeah, You know, thinking about the way everything is going, uh, we, we expected a little more. So 165 is not a terrible increase. No, uh, so I would ask the board for a motion to authorize me to sign this contract. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second that. And sorry, I kind of gave discussion already. <laughs> any questions on any of that? Yeah, Doug. How long is the, uh, if you're making a contract, how long yep. is that going to go for? Uh, this is a one-year contract, um, September through August of next year. Uh, and just so you know, I'll give you a little bit of an update. Um, we, are, we are well on our way having our heat ready for the cold weather. Um, so that's still been a little bit of a work in progress, if you remember in April. Mm -hmm. uh, we had that flood in our boiler room. So we are in pretty good shape and continuing to make progress and parts are coming in and work is being done. So we should be in, in absolute good shape for that. That's all I've got. All in favor? Unanimous. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. Committee membership. That was where we talked uh, last meeting around thinking about our community engagement <coughs> uh, committee specifically. We attached the board committees again uh, just so folks could have that close and be thinking about that. Uh, there was some talk at our last meeting that we might want to rethink our committee membership. Uh, we revised our bylaws last year to clearly identify the process for members uh, being added or removed from committees. And what we had determined at the time was that committees were to be set at our reorganization meeting in March and then if any changes were, be, were to be made, that it would have to come to the full board for those changes to be made, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were, we were talking about uh, maybe adding a member to community engagement. Um, so that's where we left off and wanted a little time to come back and think about that. Does the community engagement committee want so feel they need another member added or you think you're going to be okay going forward till reorgan march i think the question was making quorum you know? yeah well you had a you had a good group of people today yeah i'm, I'm looking they've got yeah. they have five members so i mean they they can yeah. have two absent and still make quorum so mm -hmm. that, well that we really only downfall, have right? four yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because you've got sam green cindy um Nick, Paul, Liz. Liz. So, I mean, if, if, if you're missing two members, you still have quorum. So, mm -hmm. that's up to you guys. We're always missing one. Yep. So, I mean, we. The I mean, last. That means only one of us can ever miss a meeting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, if, if, if the four of you here feel like that's reasonable and you can be in some good communication with each other, just so that you know 
hey, if somebody's got a miss, who's missing? Um, I think right know. now, uh, looks like Liz has a comment. Well, I was just gonna say, or if somebody has, a miss, has to miss, and that's, we can always reschedule also. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. I think right now, I think we're in a good position. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if somebody wants to mm -hmm. swing by and visit, we would oh, welcome yeah. them. For but sure. Right now, between now and March, I think we are okay. We're fine. Yeah. Well, if, if it becomes an issue, we can always revisit it again. So. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, so Very if you true. want to keep it the way it is, we'll just keep it the way it is for now. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right. Absolutely. For doing that. Committee reports. We are going to move on to Lens Personal Personnel Committee. We've got one yes. that, we, that we slipped in for you. Uh, we have a bus driver who has been driving as a sub for us and has been driving the van for us. Uh, and we have a good need for a full-time route bus driver. So we are offering the contract to him. I would make that a motion. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, George worked for us. I, gosh, I remember him, I think, from my Shrewsbury days. I remember chatting with him when he was uh, uh, driving at that point in time. Uh, it's been a little while since he's been here with us, but as I said, he's been driving sub uh, for us and the van for us actually since the start of the year, so the last couple of, couple of weeks. Uh, any questions? Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, we did not have a meeting tonight. Our next meeting is scheduled for October 4th at 6.30. Before we move from personnel, can uh, I ask a question relative to our new science teacher? Yes. How is that doing? The, the visa application is completed and out and was out maybe, I don't know, a week ago, a week and a half ago or so. Uh, they tell us that the expedited processing on that is about two weeks. So we got that in about when we were hoping to get that in. <coughs> Uh, they are now doing a little bit of paperwork for, I believe, the consulate uh, out in the Philippines. On their end, so the, the visa process is on our end, uh, the United States giving permission for somebody to come and work. On, on their end, they want to make sure that, that uh, best as I can tell, somebody is not entering into something that's fraudulent. They just need to do their due diligence. You know, they're asking for things like, you know, do you have a business license? Can you get a letter from your chamber of commerce? You know, things like that to make sure we're legitimate. legitimate. Um, yes. So I think a lighter process than trying to get the visa sorted through and probably a process that doesn't take very long. So, so, right, so right now it doesn't look like there'll be any gap in having a teacher. I, I would really hesitate to say that's accurate. Um, I, you know, you never know with things like this. The, you know, the, you talk to the IRS and they say they're going to send you something in 10 business days. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't come in 10 business days. <laughs> so I, I think uh, Kaylin is doing a really good job. I mean, the job of a principal these days with staffing shortages where, you know, regionally we had schools hiring 30 people, 20 people, you know. Um, we hired maybe seven, maybe. Uh, the work of a principal with these staffing shortages is really challenging mm -hmm. because our principals are having to figure out, they're, they're the ones right there filling the gaps, you know. They're the ones getting creative. They're the ones talking with their staff. Our staff are absolutely pitching in. But it really lands on our principles first, um, you know. And things didn't quite work as planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we had a couple of backup plans, and thank goodness we had a couple of backup plans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Kaylin has been working. You know, part of the reason she's probably exhausted and probably vulnerable to getting sick. She's been working uh, really hard to make sure that we not only have one option, but we have a couple of options. So we'll. We'll be ready to do what needs to be done when the time comes. And um, she's teaching two of those classes herself. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. So 
we well and we are we are very lucky that we have administrators who have no problem diving into the trenches and and hanging out with kids um, it's got to be terrifying on for the students on the one hand it is fun yeah um, but you, you don't necessarily find that everywhere uh, we have people who are committed and willing to to do the work that needs to be done so appreciate the we're invite. hopeful we're hopeful Nick but I you know is it could it happen that we don't have that science teacher till November maybe um, could be but we're, we're moving we're, along the way yeah. we want to be yeah we're we're hopeful for our <coughs> yeah appreciate it no good good question good question thank you yep is anybody here to give an update on policy I know that Andrew is not here Josh isn't here I think no meeting um, right our, our meeting got bumped okay till tomorrow tomorrow okay perfect tomorrow so meeting tomorrow 5 30 right yeah so September 21st at 5.30. Okay. Buildings and grounds. Uh, we have not had a meeting since the last board meeting, so no update. And that was on purpose. Yes. Um, it, was. it was scheduled for October for a reason. October yeah. 3rd at 5 o'clock. It's busy season. Yeah, we sort of wanted to yeah. give uh, a chance for maybe some issues to come up. Hopefully sure. not at all, sure. but yeah. Sure. sure. <laughs> so that next meeting will be uh, Tuesday, October 3rd at 5 o'clock. Community engagement. Community engagement, we met today. Um, we gave a brief update a little earlier today. Uh, we will be meeting again on October 18th at 6.30. Thank you. Um, negotiations. And uh, you're still waiting on me for a tentative date. Uh, I, I had a informal conversation a little bit with some union folks uh, typically in the contract the deadline to initiate is October 1st so we're getting pretty close to that deadline so we need to settle on a date we okay. just haven't quite settled on a date yet to get started so well, we will have a date hopefully by the next board meeting if not shortly thereafter uh, we should by the next board meeting okay. or well we will have officially initiated the process of setting a date perfect if that makes sense yeah works for me Finance. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. All right, super. So we have the following pay orders and payroll. Uh, for pay warrant, no, hold on, what am I looking at? For payroll, we have regular payroll in the amount of $595,826.38. Mm -hmm. For pay orders from the general fund, we have a pay order in the amount of $390,586.71. Also from the general fund, we have a pay order in the amount of $17,836.95. From our after school program, we have a pay order in the amount of $1,301.45. And from our lunch program, we have a pay order in the amount of $9,723.08 for a grand total of $419,448.19. We don't have any pay orders from our student activities accounts this evening. And I do make the motion that we accept and approve these pay orders and this pay roll as presented. I need a second. I'll second that. Thank you, Nick. Any discussion? No. Seeing none, <laughs> all those in favor, if you would raise your hand and or say aye. Thank you, everybody. And the next meeting of the Finance Committee is Wednesday, September 27th at 4 p.m. And that was moved from the following Thursday, which is the 5th. And that's because that is when Mill River's parent-teacher conferences are being held. Thank you. Thank you. Transact other legal business. Um, I will need to be able to sign tonight. Yep, so. absolutely. So we'd like to make that motion. I will make a motion that Matt can act as the chair and sign uh, the appropriate documents at the end of the meeting. All right, second. And a second. All in favor? Uh, Thank you, it's unanimous. Matt? Yes? I just want to add something under other legal business. Sure. Um, 
The VFBA regional meeting is tomorrow night, and I will be attending. Thank you. I'll also take a quick notable and say this morning I was at the regional... Stafford. Yeah, yeah, Stafford Board. I can't think of the official term for it. Mm -hmm. uh, Stafford's off to a fantastic st uh, start. Uh, lots of energized students and staff and et cetera. New River's sending about three dozen students uh, a spread across all of the different genres, whether it's auto tech or culinary or cosmetology or engineering or et cetera. It was quite the exciting little roundabout this morning. So. Good. Awesome, thank you. Any other legal business? Agenda building. Uh, so we've got, and I, I put the schedule in that we had tentatively discussed, and I put on paper, Liz had requested, that was in the packet. Uh, we are scheduled for October 4th for sports update from Kim, and then our class size update per uh, G14, our policy. So that's a great, uh, I think, lead in to budget season. So uh, I like the timing of that being there. Those are the only two things I have on our schedule. Is uh, do folks have a need for something else on that meeting? No, no, okay. If something pops up, you know, we'll be conferring about the agenda, you know, end of this week, early next week. So if things pop up, let us know. Absolutely. Uh, Shrewsbury, just to give folks a little bit of a heads up, tentatively Shrewsbury, October 18th. Uh, Kristen's ready to go for that. So I think if we, we should probably plan on that unless anybody sees a reason not to. I know that's a bit out, but we like to give those folks enough lead time to prep and have things ready. Okay. Travel to Shrewsbury for fall foliage, works for okay. me. Okay, there you go, Doug. If you're lucky, you won't have snow up there by then. Not, let's um, hope not. Sometimes we have snow in October. It's sometimes. that high up. So no, no. That's my yeah. Nice warm. Oh, man. yeah. It's, it happens sometimes, yep. Okay. It's good snow. Now, we do have an executive session tonight. We do have a need for, and I'll get that language really quickly. Uh, I would ask that the board... Uh, I would ask that the board enter executive session to discuss uh, I, I would say um, <clears throat> evaluation of a public employee. I think is the most appropriate. Can I get that motion? I'll make that motion. Second? I'll second it. Second. All in favor? All. Okay, Liz, we'll get you another link really quickly here. Uh, we're going to mute the room. We're not going to take any action. Public. Right? Yeah, no action planned, but so we will come back. Do you have to vote yeah. to go William can into go. executive yeah. session? We're going to go yeah. somewhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to go somewhere else. So, so I will now make the motion that we enter into executive session, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll make the motion. You, you can second it. I'll second it. All in favor? There we go.